Here's how to get the most out of the camera app on your new iPhone 15 Pro Max. Welcome everybody, welcome to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here, and the iPhone 15 Pro Max has not been on the market long, but in this video, I'm gonna walk you through everything that you need to know to master the camera app. Everything from locking in the focus to nighttime portrait modes to taking advantage of that five times optical zoom lens. There's a lot to talk about, so we're gonna jump into it. Before we do, I just wanna thank ESR for sponsoring this video. With that said, let's dive into it. So here I have my iPhone 15 Pro Max, and we're gonna jump right here into the camera app. So this is Apple's stock camera app. Now normally when you take a photo, you can just tap this button here at the bottom, really easy to do. But if you're holding your iPhone, sometimes it might be easier to use your volume buttons. That's right, the volume buttons can actually be used to take photos. Just clicking either the top button or the bottom button will snap a photo. Now, if you hold down either of these buttons, if I hold down the top volume button, it'll start recording a video. So now a video is being recorded right now. And if I let go, it'll stop recording that video. If we go back up to here and we're going to jump into the settings application, we can actually change what those buttons do. This option here says use volume up for burst. When this is enabled and we're here in the photo app, if I hold the volume up button, a series of burst photos will be captured instead of a video. So I just captured like 20 photos here. This is a burst shot. So burst, 20 photos were captured. I can go through all these photos. They look the same because the phone didn't move, but you can capture burst photos. So the up can capture burst and the bottom can shoot video. Unique to the iPhone 15 Pro series is the new action button. The action button resides on top of the volume up button and you can use it to program a bunch of different functionality. So for me right here, if I press and hold to run the action button, I have a pop up with this folder of shortcuts so I can set my focus mode, open certain apps, uh, adjust my brightness, run home scenes, feed the cat, all these different things. But if we jump into the settings application and go to action button, you can see the various options we have. So one option would be just to launch the camera. So by pressing and holding, I can jump directly into the camera app to capture that moment. If I go down here to the drop down, I can switch the modes of the camera. So it can go directly into portrait mode, portrait selfie, a selfie shot, whatever those things are, or just leave it directly in photo mode. If we go over here to shortcut, right now I have it set to show a folder. You can set it to open an app. So if I go to choose an app, I may want to run the latest version of Halide. So the new version of Halide is super cool. So now if I go back here, I press and hold the shortcut button or the action button and boom, we're in Halide. Super fast, super easy, launch a third party camera app instead of Apple's. Let's look at how to adjust the scope of your photos. So there are three cameras on the back of the iPhone 15 Pro Max. There's an ultra wide lens, a telephoto lens, and your primary main lens or just wide lens. So you can see here at the bottom, we have 0.5 is our ultra wide, and five is our telephoto lens. And then we have what looks like one or 1.5 or 1.2, and then we have two. So what's happening here is Apple actually is giving you two different options. So the main camera is a 48 megapixel sensor. So Apple will allow you to shoot at either one times or two times using that primary sensor. But Apple also now with the iPhone 15 Pro Max allows you to choose at what range, what focal distance you'd like your shot to be. So you can shoot at 24 millimeter, which is one times. You can zoom in just a little bit and get a 1.2 crop factor for a 24, uh, or you can go all the way up to 35. So it's 24, 28, and 35 millimeter. Those are your focal distances for one, 1.2, and 1.5 times zoom. A lot of people might choose to shoot 35 or you wanna go wider at one, but you can set those as an actual preset. So if we go back here to the settings application, that main camera, 24, 28, and 35 millimeter focal distance, you can turn these additional lenses off. So if you don't want them, you can toggle them off or you can choose which is your default. So 24, 28, or 35, one, 1 1.2, or 1 1.5 times crop factor. This year, Apple also gives the ability to shoot on that main lens in either 24 or 12 megapixel. So you can shoot at 12 or 24 when using that primary sensor. To move between these different cameras, you can just tap on the little bubbles here at the bottom, 
or you can swipe to move between. So here I can actually zoom in and all the way out just by scrolling back and forth on this little wheel. So it's gonna give you different distances along the way. So if I can keep going, it'll go all up to 25 times digital zoom. Once you let go, that wheel will eventually disappear. But if you wanna get rid of it faster, you can just pull down on it to dismiss it that way. When taking a photo, aside from using the button or using the volume buttons on the side, you can also use what's called quick take. So here, we're just gonna go ahead and hold onto this button and it's immediately gonna start recording a video. So here we have a video being recorded and the time is clicking in at the top. If I let go, it'll stop that video. If I tap and hold to start recording a video and I swipe to the right, we're actually locking it in to video mode. Now I can let go and that video will continue to be recorded. While in a video, you can tap this here, which is a shutter button to take a photo and tap on the uh, square there to stop recording. If I tap and then swipe to the left, sorry, tap and swipe to the left, now I'm capturing a burst photo. So again, I just recorded 21 shots. So just tap, swipe to the left. Now I'm capturing burst photos. Before we get too far into this, I have their sponsor for this video, ESR. So ESR makes great accessories for your iPhone, including a new lineup of cases and screen protectors. I love their silicone case. So first, all the buttons are covered on the side, including the new action button, but it's still so easy to press. The bottom is fully covered, so you're protected there in case of falls. It also has a built-in camera guard that's actually metal. So a metal ring around the camera, and as an added bonus, actually pops out into a little stand. How cool is that? Just prop it up, watch videos, it's such a good idea. Just built right in, it's not taking out the back, and it's fully MagSafe compatible. In fact, I've been using it this whole time in this video to hold my iPhone up on this MagSafe stand. So just a great silicone case here. They also have screen protectors and they have everything you need for the screen protector. It comes in a three pack with a little tray and a non-slip mat. Just place your iPhone in, everything gets aligned, put the screen protector on, and boom. You have it installed in seconds with no air bubbles, everything is perfectly straight and where it needs to be. ESR has a ton of accessories out there for your iPhone, so check them out, the link down below in the description. Thank you again to ESR for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to all those cameras, tips, and tricks. Let's look at some additional on-screen controls. Here at the bottom, you can swipe left and right or just tap to move between modes. So I can swipe here to move between, or I can just jump quickly to cinematic all the way here, photo over here, panorama over here. Just swipe to move between those various modes. You can also turn the camera around. Hey, there I am. Tap turn back the other way, and the bottom left hand will bring you to your gallery or the Photos app, and just pull down to return to the camera application. Along the top, we have some additional controls. So on the far left, we have our flash icon. You can turn the flash on or off. There is night mode. You can turn night mode on or off. Night mode sometimes you may want to turn off because you have to keep your camera still. So if you are shooting in the dark and that little icon will engage because it's too dim to capture a photo, you can go ahead and just turn it off. That way you can kind of move the camera a little bit. It might be grainy, uh, but it just depends on the photo that you're trying to take. Then you have the shared library icon here. So whether I'm in my shared library or my personal library. And on the right, the far right icon is your live photos. So whether you want live photos on or off. To bring up more controls, you can tap that little carrot at the top of the screen. When you tap that, a new tray appears here at the bottom. Some of these controls are duplicated. So here we have our flash that we just already talked about where you can do auto, on, or off. So up here you just have on or off. There you can change auto, on, or off. Here we have night mode, again, where you can actually manually change the distance here or the duration. So if we wanted to get something a little bit darker, it might give you something like 30 seconds. You could then adjust this to where you want it to be. So it just by default is auto, but you could dial that in further. Further. Then we have live photos, again, auto, on, or off. Go back. Um, we have here, so these are our photographic styles. So swiping between, standard, vibrant, cool, we have just a few different options for these photographic styles. You can choose the one that you'd like, and you can even adjust these. So you can change the tone and the warmth. This button will go ahead and reset it, and this button will take you back to our tool tray here. Then we have our crop factors. So whether we want to go 4.3, which is kind of your standard photo, whether you want to go square, which is great for socials, uh, we have 16.9, which is more cinematic. In this case, we're vertical, so it's more like you know 9 by 16. Uh, but yeah, you can adjust the crop factor of your photos. Other controls, including our exposure compensation. So if we want to lighten up or darken it, leave it there in the center, it'll do it automatically. 
We have a timer, so three seconds or 10 seconds that you can choose. Um, we have different uh, filters that we can apply, so filters, dramatic, cool, all of those. You can apply right here at the time of capture. Uh, and then finally, our last one here is again, shared library, same icon that we have here at the top. You may notice that icon here at the bottom of the screen, and that is for macro photography. You don't need to enable macro photography. Simply when you bring an object very close to the camera, it'll automatically engage that macro mode. And when you move further away, it'll turn it back off. The macro photography is using the wide angle lens or the ultra wide angle lens, which is why you see a little bit of a jump as it moves between the two, it's enabled. And there we go back into macro mode. So just get really close to your subject and it'll go ahead and turn on macro for you. When capturing a photo or a video, you can tap on screen to adjust where you're focusing your shot. Plus, when you tap on something on the screen, you can swipe your finger up and down to adjust the exposure. So I can get this a little bit lighter, I can bring it down a little bit darker. You can adjust some of this after the fact, but it's nice to be able to dial some of it in while you're actually shooting. Then we have portrait mode. Portrait mode you typically would need to switch into, and for the iPhone 15 Pro Max, you have one, two, and five times zoom levels when capturing your portrait photos. So here we can go into like a one time, so I should be able to probably take a portrait photo of that maybe. Um, but when portrait mode is enabled, this will turn yellow. You can change between the different types of portrait mode lighting. So there's different studio lightings that you can choose between here at the bottom. And again, just disappears when you let go. But what's really cool about the new 15 series is you can actually capture a regular photo. And if there is a person, a dog, or a cat, depth data will also be captured. I'll show you what that means in actual use. Here's a photo of my son that I took. And especially with kids, live photos are amazing. You just tap and hold and you see him come to life, reacting as he's just playing out in the yard. But if we go here to the top, you can see that it's a live photo. If I tap on this dropdown, I also have new options to switch it into a portrait mode. When I enable portrait mode, it'll blur the background of the shot and it makes it look absolutely stunning. It looks so cool as a portrait shot. So I can go here and I can adjust the degree of background blur by adjusting the aperture. So all the way up to like an F14, which is like no blur in the background or dropping it down to an F14, which will be the most blur. By default, it puts you right around here at a 2.8, but you can choose this whatever you'd like. So it's really cool that you have the option of enabling portrait mode or if you want to enable just live photos. But every live photo now that has a person, dog or a cat will also be a portrait mode photo if you want. So you don't have to worry about moving between a portrait shot or a live photo when you're taking photos of your kids now. Uh, it'll just automatically do it. Now if you're taking a picture of something like food or maybe an object like this HomePod mini back here, you still would have to manually enable it and try to get it to lock in. But for just regular people, dogs, cats, you no longer have to switch to that dedicated portrait mode. When macro is enabled, you do have the option of turning it off. And if you go into settings, it gives you that control. So you can leave it just automatic and it'll turn it off and on for you. Or with macro control, you could turn it off if you wanted to stop trying to switch into that macro mode. For pros out there, you may want to enable raw photos. So here we go into pro raw and resolution control inside of the formats of photos. Uh, you can see we have JPEG Max, which is up to 20 or 48 megapixels, Pro Raw at 12 megapixel, or Pro Raw Max up to 48 megapixels. So a few different options for capturing raw photos. And if we go back here into the camera app, you can see we have the option here at the top. If I tap on that, it gives me the option. So right now I'm in Raw Max. If I tap it again, it can just turn off. So you can't change you know, the type of raw, but you can enable it or disable it here from inside of the camera app. When you do capture a raw photo, it'll be denoted here inside of photos. So here, this was a burst photo and this next one, that's a raw photo. So you can see it's marked as raw. Uh, it'll just allow you further control over editing. It'll retain more of the highlights and more of the shadows that you don't get with a compressed image. Let's take a look at video modes. So by default, you have video, cinematic, slow-mo, and time-lapse videos, each doing different things. Cinematic can blur different things in the background and pull to your subject. It's pretty impressive. Slow-mo captures high frame rates at various resolutions, and of course, time lapses are also super cool. In standard video mode, many of the same thing applies. So you can tap on your subject to lock it in and adjust the exposure, which will just change or lock in as you move your shot around. You have additional options for video mode, including turning on action mode. Action mode is so cool. So here I am running around the yard. It does require a little bit more light, but when I'm chasing a puppy around and just jumping up and down and just being ridiculously vibrating with my camera, Action mode can still lock things in, and it even works with that five times telephoto lens. This footage just looks absolutely incredible when you see the before and the after. 
For video settings, we can record video at various resolutions. So we have 4K at 20, we can go all the way down to 720 at 30, we can go up to 4K at 60, um, but a few different options there for video. If we go back, we can record slow-mo at various frame rates up to 1080p at 240 frames per second in cinematic mode. You can shoot 1080 at 30, 4K at 24, PAL format, which is 4K at 25, or 4K at 30. Pros can also enable Apple ProRes and HDR, SDR, SDR, or Log, and you can even record to an external drive plugged into the USB-C port. So that's it. That's how you can master the camera app on the iPhone 15 Pro Max.